More trouble for the satellite radio industry. SOCAN, the Society of Composers, Authors and Music Publishers of Canada, is suing satellite radio service XM Canada for non-payment of copyright royalties. XM has responded by saying it wants to meet its royalty obligations, but simply can't at this time due to the economic downturn. Will satellite radio ever be able to deliver on the promises it made when it was launched earlier this decade? Or is it an expensive luxury that Canadians simply won't pay for? Joining us by telephone right now from Toronto, writer, producer and performer Bob Segarini. You may know him as uh, radio DJ The Iceman. He's with RadioThatDoesn'tSuck.com. And here in studio we have journalist Greg O'Brien from CART. .ca. His specialty is the media. Greg, is satellite radio in big trouble? Um, I don't know. It, satellite radio is sort of part of the overall bigger media picture. I mean, it looked like a good technology when it launched. I wouldn't say it's, uh, you know, it, it's in some financial trouble right now in the States, but it's just a small part of the overall media picture nowadays. Not as big as they thought it was going to be. Why? Why hasn't it caught on with everyone? It's expensive. Um, you know, you're, you're looking at 12 bucks a month, 13 bucks a month, whatever you have. Um, that's the primary reason that I think uh, it just hasn't caught on the way they thought it was going to catch on. All right, Bob, Bob, do you think most Canadian artists are happy with the exposure they get on any kind of radio, be it satellite radio, terrestrial radio, or do they, do they deserve the money that they feel is owed to them by, uh, uh, by, by SOCAN? And in turn, does SOCAN have every right to say, look, I don't care what your financial situation is, you guys owe us money for playing our music? Well, this is a, a, a much more compl uh, complex issue than it appears to be on the surface, Mark. It, the, the problem is, is that, of course, uh, well, speaking as a consumer and a, and a performer and a writer and a consumer of music, um, yeah, it, it's great that um, these uh, artists are being heard, and more importantly, not just across Canada, they are being exposed by satellite radio to uh, an estimated 12 million new listeners. Now, um, I think that any, especially indie artist, that uh, uh, needs exposure in order to sell, however, many CDs or downloads that they're, they're going to sell. This is an extremely valuable uh, resource for them. Um, major label and major label artists who see uh, the uh, results of any of these sort of fees that are being brought in, um, yeah, you know, they're going to see a reasonable amount of money. But the people that are making the music that, that uh, XM and Sirius are exposing to the U.S. audience, they wouldn't have stood a chance to be heard there if it wasn't for Sat Radio. So. Uh, Greg, I want you to you talk about satellite radio versus conventional radio. Um, how, what is the state of the industry as a whole? Um, it, it's tough to compare the two because satellite radio has so many, uh, so less, so much less com uh, commercials on the air, and they're not local at all. Um, they're both struggling in different ways. The ad market is, is really the problem with uh, conventional radio. Um, the automotive market is a big deal with satellite radio with, uh, you know, because they sell a lot of their radios through new cars, as, as, as a lot of people will know. Um, so it is, it's a tough market uh, on, on two different levels. The other problem with, uh, with satellite radio is that they're fighting um, the iPod generation, uh, where people will rather use their, their new cars, their jacks, to plug in their iPod rather than listen to, uh, to satellite radio. And Bob, that's one of the, my uh, concerns with, or perhaps criticisms of satellite radio, is that their playlist is really so limited, at least to my experience. Satellite radio, are you saying that their playlists are yes, limited? Yes, I'm saying that the They play didn't start out limited until terrestrial radio people got involved with the programming of the stations there. Uh, also, you have to realize that very soon, all terrestrial radio, all satellite radio, is all going to be heard on the Internet uh, through Wi-Fi connections in people's cars, portable units the size of, of a watch. Uh, everybody's going to be on a level playing field. And the people that invest heavily now in the Internet are going to survive just like NBC and CBS did when the rollover was from radio to television, and they were the only two people that bled money for years, but came out on top of the new technology. Boy, Greg, that, that goes against everything that, as you mm -hmm. and I both know, that broadcasters are claiming they can't make money from the Internet. They can't make money now. But the, the point is, is the people with vision and people that have a long-term vision of what's going on. We're just talking about changing distribution uh, situations here. Uh, no longer will music be on a, on a vinyl or a, or a uh, 
a, a disc? A disc, it's going to be available to you, either cloud or file or whatever else new things, uh, whatever new things come along. And in order to monetize this, it's going to have to be monetized the same way that water and electricity and everything else is, hmm. by subscription. Right. Now, 25 years ago, nobody, no one, would have thought that they would shell out almost $200 a month for television. But everybody does. I, I disagree with you there, I have to admit. I, I don't think that people are going to pay for anything that they can get over the airwaves, and we're going to have to look to conventional advertising. And, and Greg, I want you to respond. Oh, to I, I believe the conventional well, advertising, once they realize that I'm loving it, is a McDonald's commercial and not a 30- or 60-second spot, right. I think they're going to do very well in the new, uh, on, in, in the new paradigm. Okay, okay let's, let's, let's just shift gears here for a sec. Greg, uh, while we still have time, our sister station in Victoria, B.C., television station, was scheduled to go off the air a couple of days ago. They They've managed to hang in there. Uh, is, the, is, is conventional television in Canada struggling uh, as badly as people say it is, or is there an opportunity for this station to actually survive and maybe flourish in, in, in Victoria, B.C., perhaps the way this one is here in Hamilton? Conventional television, the way it has been done, um, ha is is struggling. Um, I'm hopeful, and others are hopeful, that uh, what CH is doing, uh, creating its own more of its own local content, is the way to go in the future. Because people are going to go to different places, whether it's on the web, whether it's on TV, whether it's on radio, whether it's on satellite, to find original content they can't get anywhere else. And that is what I hope uh, Check out in Victoria is going to uh, is going to move towards as well. Okay. The, secret, the secret of, of terrestrial broadcasters' uh, success is going to be, and this is a big compliment to all of you, exactly what CH is, CH is doing, local programming, local music, local activities, local uh, um, involvement for the, uh, for the people that live in the area where the broadcaster is heard. It's totally I couldn't have said it better myself, Bob. We've got to run. Sorry to cut you off. Bob Segarini, thank you for your time. Greg O'Brien, we appreciate your time as well. Thanks, guys. Thank you.